you know, sometimes you get like a bit bored and you have a quick look on YouTube. And uh, what do you see? Is it possible to have zero calorie sauce? Very nice. Well, it is nice. You can actually really taste the cheese and stuff, innit? I quite like that. Yes. Yeah, that's great. I, um, how would you describe mm. that? Oh, that's... Mm. If you do like smoky barbecue, I assume you you will love it. It's just it's just gonna be yeah. There we go. Oh, that's that's sweet. But it tastes tomato tomato in it. It's sweet. That's not bad. Oh, surely not. No. Well, you can call me scrapshoot, but basically, I ain't buying it. So, the only way to do it. Review it. So, the Skinny Food Company established 2019, which has come up with many, many products up to now, but what I'm interested in is the sauces and the reason why is because that was seems to be its pilot product they've been around for a little while now a lot of people are talking about them the only problem which i've got is that they're showing zero calorie no sugar gluten free which is all absolutely fantastic if true so all i want to do in this video is review them try them because the, you know some of the people on youtube could have actually been paid to say all oh, these are great to make sure that it's just not a false review from me I'm also going to take them out on the streets, which is the first time we're going to go out on location. So, what we want to do is, first of all, try and get hold of the sauces. I sent out an email to the Skinny Food Company, also weirdly known as Not Guilty, not quite sure why, and basically saying, look, I've got a YouTube channel, I've got a book, I'll be a good person to review these sauces. Do you have the number of calories, saturated fat, and carbohydrates in each other's sauces based on 100 grams. So we sent off the email, see what happens, see what response we get. But meanwhile, ordering. So the easiest way to order at this point is to go onto Google, type in the Skinny Food Company, and sure enough, the website appears. It's great, apart from the first few minutes where you suddenly get an annoying wheel which when you click on it, it seems to say you can have free delivery. But, you know, it's uh, it, that's fine. I, mean, it's, I don't know, free delivery is probably good. Uh, so what I wanted to find was, you know, a bundle. I didn't want to spend a great deal of money. I'm not that confident that they're going to be great. So looking through the bundles, you find, and I did get an email saying the bundles have just come back in. And that's going to be good. But it seemed to say it was sold out which I couldn't quite get you know, grasp. But yeah, to the one at the side, you still had a selection of sauces very similar, which was actually available. So the only thing I could figure out what the difference was, was the garlic mayo. So what I did was have a look and found, actually found the garlic mayo on the website. I could order it, which was great. Uh, so off I went, uh, put my little order in. And then the second thing, which I found rather annoying, is that we suddenly get a timer at the top saying you have now got six or nine minutes to purchase this otherwise we may let someone else to have it and it kind of doesn't make you feel special anyway so i just wanted these sauces anyway so we've got the garlic mayo we've now got the bundle which is four and then at the time because this was early september you suddenly had oh we can throw in an extra mystery gift a mystery free sauce and not only that it'll all be delivered in three days but let's see if they actually deliver it on time. That's where we are then. We put this order in about three days ago and it did turn up on time. It says two to three day shipping and today it has arrived. Now, I did go for a bundle pack. It makes it cheaper. As I've shown on the website, you do get a mystery free gift. So let's cut in and see what we've actually got. Looks like they do recycle boxes, which is quite interesting. So that's definitely a plus. 
So the first thing we've got there is the curry sauce, followed by typical tomato ketchup and the garlic and herb sauce, which we did get it in the end, and the smoky barbecue. But we've also been given chocolate crisps. So that's something else that we can review. And the secret sauce, which was honey mustard. So that is not a bad selection to give it a try. And we also can work out the calories and things like that. So that's going to be an interesting experiment. bit of paper and I will so that's our local collection we'll have to see what they like that's what we've just seen there is that three days later the box turned up and we got a selection of sauces that we now have here and what I'm going to do is go through them one at a time and just basically try them now, when I was younger, I tried to be a chef, which means that my taste palette is very, very good at detecting the flavours. So, hopefully, I shall be able to give a fair response to each of these flavours. Uh, but we'll see what happens. So, first up, I would say is, you give, you've got to give these a shake before you use them. So, first up, we're going for garlic and herb. So, let's see what this tastes like. Bit on the finger. Oop. The first thing to notice is that they are runny. But that is quite a strong garlic taste. It's definitely got a male. I'd like to look a bit more for male taste, to be honest. But yeah, it tastes quite nice. It has a slightly vinegar aftertaste, but that's because I'm probably just taking the sauce themselves. I mean, the average uh, serving of these is classed as 2 mil. It's absolutely pointless trying at the back of the package though. The kind of shows you in 100 mil and 2 mil. So showing you in 2 mil is a complete waste of time, waste of space, but there you go. Good. No matter what you have on 2 mil, it's going to be calorie free. We had the pot noodle review that came out all on that. There's a little bit of butter on there, and I'll put an asterisk there because it was zero grams. It doesn't mean the butter is zero grams. I can take a piece of bread now and just take a crumb. It doesn't make the bread zero in calories, saturated fat or anything. But having two mil of this, apparently, makes it zero calorie. So in fact, what we can do is get one of these, which is measured in milliliters. We want two mil, so we'll go for two mil of this sauce. We can splat it a little bit, but I think that's got two mil. We just squint it out. Now, no matter where you go for sauces, if they give you that much on a plate, I don't think you're going to be impressed. Back to the tasting, so it does have a slight vinegary aftertaste but is it because I'm trying the sauce direct what we can do is what we can do is get a little bit of something to try it with restart Yeah, and as I thought, it's got something on there now. You can still get the initial lit of the taste, but the aftertaste isn't as great. So you're getting the garlic, you're getting a bit of the mayo, you're getting the herbs. Yeah, nice. Quite nice. Barbecue. Once again, another runny sauce, I've on the crisp there. But, that's everywhere. Before I try it, clean the pot. 
Let's see what it's like. That's the banana to say. Really smacky barbecue uh, flavour. Sauce is still running. That's my only criticism. The flavours are extremely good. I would say the flavours are above supermarket. Now I think these sauces were about three ninety nine. Probably an average sauce at supermarket is two pound. So they are more expensive, but they're far better for you apparently. But the taste, they do taste great. They do taste more like what you get in a restaurant rather than what you get out of the bottle at the supermarket. So they're probably worth the price. You know, everyone's favourite. Give it the shake. Oh, I'm bar now, and I got used to the runniness. That one tastes wonderfully well. It tastes lots, very tomato, very in your face, very little aftertaste. Uh, I'm sure I've seen a couple of bad reviews where people have just tried the sauces, but uh, you have to try it with something, three sauce crisp, something like that. That's my favourite up there. That is very nice. Honey mustard. I struggle with honey mustard because I like mustard on a burger and a sausage. I don't particularly like it sweet. So I kind of contradict. You've got four out of four as a runny sauce. Yep, trying my best for that. It's runny. It's more sweet than mustardy. If it had been the other way around, nothing could have been happier. But it's more sweet than mustardy. And it's just a strange sauce to have. So, tastes nice. You can taste the mustard in there. Usually sweet. Would I buy that normally? I don't think I would do. Like I say, in the packet it was a bundle. So this was free. Might come back to that. And another weird one for me. <laughs> Is the chip shop curry sauce? Now, maybe it's where I live, I don't know. Who knows? But uh, when you put something like this on food, it's like chip shop curry. But it's hot, cold. Don't really get to, to understand that. But we'll give it a try. Do we have a full house of pinna sauces? Taste the mild one's been really, really good. Can't really compare this to supermarket. I've never seen a chip shop curry sauce in a supermarket. Yes, there's one that didn't go everywhere. It's a little bit thicker. There we go. It's a little bit thicker. As a much spicier punch than what I expect. It does have that chip shop type curry taste but it's uh spicier than what I'd expect it to be. It's almost like one above karma spice wise. It's not blow yet off spicer. It's quite uh, surprising that it is spicer. But all these have been kept in the fridge. Uh as instructed. I think what I can't quite understand is the so bad diet and all of them. 2020, but yeah, on the website it says keep in the fridge for up four weeks maximum. Uh, but at the end of the video, we'll have a look to see what they're like after the four weeks. Uh, you know, I want to experiment with these two. The other three are great, they're cool sauces, they taste wonderful. Uh, they probably taste more restaurant level than supermarket level, more expensive than a supermarket. Type sauce, but they are more flavoursome and they're far more healthier. That is the claim. The taste it passes on, the liver it's passed on. Let's just have a play with these last two sauces because uh, I want to know more. More!
Right, so here we go then. Must have money, leftover sausage, leftover burger. Let's see what it tastes like this way. It does taste alright. Just the sweetness I'm still not sure about. But it tastes nice, it's good. If you like sweet mustard, this is the thing for you. But I'm grass fed and burgers, it tastes good. What I've done though, however, I've got a bit of sausage. Is put in a little bit of the old uh, ketchup. Give that a bit of a whirl. And that should come out as hot dogs at the cinema. It tastes okay. It's a sweetness. I can't get made around the sweetness. If you love sweet mustard, it's great. But now, mm, chip shop shit curry. Now, the best way to test this, chips. I've got some chips on. Perfectly happy to do any taste test with chips. But it's cold. I don't want it cold. So what we're going to do is see how it responds in the microwave. So a quick minute in the microwave, and it seems to have congealed and run into a funny, bubbly pattern. So what we'll do is give it a bit of a stir and it's pretty much back to normal. And what's interesting, I'll put it in the bowl for see if there's any splattering or any microwave splattering. The answer is no. Will it tick in the box? The big question is, hot sauce and chips. What's my reaction on that? That tasted damn good sauce. But it's a bit weird because you still get the spiciness that's quite prominent there. But it kind of gives you like a raisinary type taste. It really tastes like you've just been to a good, a very good chippy and ordered chips and curry sauce. Warm it up. That's my tip in this video. Warm it up. But then my taste test. And the big question is what does other people think? And I decided to take this on the road, so plus also the book's called We Can't Spell Success Without Who's Called, we need you to be involved. So we went over to More Than Words, which is a dance group and a social gathering centre for people with special needs to see what they thought. And we also went to Lee Market with Molly's Candles and Gifts, and we just let the sauces loose, and just get off the street reaction. So at least you know it's not me saying that they're really good, they are a lot better than what I expected. But well, let's see what happened. So we'll start with more than words and then we're off to all these candles and gifts. We'll give it a try, I guess it's at the end, but we won't need to. We'll give it a try, I'll just review on everybody so anybody yeah. wants to yeah. try. So it's just that thing. Mm. Just, with it. Stop, just, see that. just try that. I can't read some because I forget it. That's nice. I've They're both nice. Mm. And I've cocked that out. Well, oh, oh, that's really nice. These are garlic me. I've got a thing called garlic though, I just love garlic. Water. <laughs> 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 I get it, I've seen tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I get it, I've seen tomorrow. Yeah. 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 No, it's it, ta it tastes, um, quite I tend to eat things quite yeah. natural. I don't, yeah, oh, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that, that's, ah, that's, that's my favourite. Is that your favourite? Yeah, I think so. Can't get enough. <laughs> Now that one is mouth. Yeah, it's only worth one for taking it. Isn't yeah. it? Oh, I've got a brush like that. Mm. I like that. Mm. That's my least favourite. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> but saying that, if I'd have had that first, I might have had a different 
Do you own the others? Yeah, because you yeah. taste it also. It's a different taste now, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, now, I'm, now I'm seeing why she's saying she likes that. Let me try that one first. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Shall I just be a test and do them all? <laughs> no. Nice. It's got a carpet we can go link. Mm. Nice that, one. Yeah, I know, but that one, that, that is just... Oh. It's amazing, isn't it? We've been out to the boat, we've had various people try and disarse us. It's quite amazing how many people do not want to appear on camera. It's, it's a really good observation. But people did. Looking at how many people tried the sources, we had 27. Out of the 27 people, nobody actually said they didn't like it. Which I was amazed at. I absolutely was. However, there was four people where they tried one of the two of the sources and kind of well, it's not one which I'd rather buy. I've tried it. It's nice, but it's not really one for me. Which is fine, you know. At least it was out there. At least they tried it. But the key thing was 100% taste record. Everybody absolutely loved them. So as far as taste concerned, it is a tick in the box. As always, and it probably wouldn't be one of my videos if it didn't have a spreadsheet in it. Here's a spreadsheet here which is showing three different sauces. We have mayo in blue, sweet chilli sauce in green and tomato ketchup in a pinky ready type colour. And we seem to have here approximately 22 ingredients across all these sauces. Now the majority of these are natural ingredients. You've got your vinegar, water, citrus fibre etc etc. And we also have flavourings, so we have funny and extracts, salt, sweeteners, you know, kind of dismantle this sauce by sauce. So the first thing to do is get rid of any natural type ingredients, which is water. We can get rid of that. Uh, citrus fibre. We can get rid of vinegar. Now that's interesting, that it's 10% vinegar, and it is that the taste did. There's a slight aftertaste of vinegar. When you actually took the sauce without adding anything with it, like a crisp or anything. Well, there you go, 10% vinegar, so we can get rid of that. That's probably all the, oh, the sweetener. We can get rid of the sweetener. Salt can go. So once again, we're cutting down the list very, very quickly. The next thing to do now is look at non-common items, which is going to be basically colourings or flavourings. We have this one in Kamat ketchup, so we can get rid of that. We have mustard in the chilli sauce, and we also have celery extract in the chilli sauce. We have that in the ketchup only. We have extract from fruit of black pepper. Uh, black pepper extract in the mayo. Garlic extract in the mayo. Uh, colour, we're interested in colour. Onion extract in the chilli sauce. And then we're left with these three, which is just 
and if everyone told you preservatives and flavorings, we can get rid of those. Finally, looking at the three ingredients that we've got left is we have tomato paste, which we can get rid of. And we know that this is Coboxymethyl cellulose, CMC, or cellulose gum is a cellulose derivative with coboxymethyl groups, CH2 cool, bound to some of the hydroxyl groups of the glucopyranose monomers that make up the cellulose backbone. It is often used as its sodium salt. Sodium coboxymethyl cellulose. It used to be marketed under the name Tylose, a registered trademark of SE Tylose. This CMC powder is widely used in the ice cream industry, to make ice creams without churning at extreme low temperatures, thereby eliminating the need for the conventional churners or salt ice mixes. CMC is used in preparing bakery products such as bread and cake. The use of CMC gives the loaf a much improved quality at a reduced cost to the baker, by economizing on the fat component. CMC is also used as an emulsifier in high-quality biscuits. By dispersing fat uniformly in the dough, it improves the release of the dough from the molds and cutters, achieving well-shaped biscuits without any distorted edges. It can also help to reduce the amount of egg yolk or fat used in making the biscuits, thus achieving economy. Use of CMC in candy preparation ensures smooth dispersion in flavor oils, and improves texture and quality. CMC is used in chewing gums, margarine and peanut butter as an emulsifier. And basically what that is, it's a binder, and it only appears in mayo and sweet chili sauces of these samples. So, once again, a binder we don't need to worry about, we can get rid of it. But we're now left with one common ingredient throughout all the sauces, which is xanthium gum. Now, doing a little bit of research, xanthium gum was felt to have not been researched properly in pregnancies and people with heart conditions. But that scar seems to have gone away, and it's perfectly safe. Xanthan gum is a polysaccharide with many industrial uses, including as a common food additive. It is an effective thickening agent and stabilizer to prevent ingredients from separating. It can be produced from simple sugars using a fermentation process, and derives its name from the species of bacteria used, Xanthomonas campestris. Xanthan gum 1% can produce a significant increase in the viscosity of a liquid. In foods, xanthan gum is common in salad dressings and sauces. It helps to prevent oil separation by stabilizing the emulsion, although it is not an emulsifier. Xanthan gum also helps suspend solid particles, such as spices. Xanthan gum helps create the desired texture in many ice creams. Toothpaste often contains xanthan gum as a binder to keep the product uniform. Xanthan gum also helps thicken commercial egg substitutes made from egg whites, to replace the fat and emulsify as found in yolks. It is also a preferred method of thickening liquids for those with swallowing disorders, since it does not change the color or flavor of foods or beverages at typical use levels. In gluten-free baking, Xanthan gum is used to give the dough or batter the stickiness that would otherwise be achieved with gluten. In most foods, it is used at concentrations of 0.5% or less. Xanthan gum is used in a wide range of food products, such as sauces, dressings, meat and poultry products, bakery products, confectionery products, beverages and dairy products. In fact, it's that safe, it's that if you go to the supermarket, and the only place where you can get it from is the free from aisle. You can actually buy it. And basically, it's a powder which is derived from bacteria. Trust me, when I say it's a powder, it is very much a powder. And a tub that size. Probably get baking powder, similar sorts of thing, which uh, baking powder is not as natural. This is completely natural. Tub that size, it's about £2.60. It's not cheap. So when we get back to the skinny sauce company, and they say, you know, people say, well, it's £3.99 for that uh, tomato ketchup. 
if we're using just flavorings, colorings, a little bit of binding, and then something like xanthium gum uh, to bring it all together, and also for xanthium gum as a preservative, we are using expensive ingredients to create guinea sauces. Well, they're not going to be cheap, they are going to be better for you. I've kind of mentioned the price for it in these videos. I'm going to give it a tick today because it's using premium products and the sauce itself, as I said before, doesn't taste supermarket quality, it's more restaurant quality. Brilliant, that's the end of the price issue for me. You know, it's, it's, it's worth the money. Also, just to note, is that with Xanthium gum, why I've been doing is making bread with it quite recently. I've given many people loaves with Xanthium gum in it. It's not really detectable in the taste palette and with the bread, I actually left it for eight days, just left on the kitchen top. It smelt slightly, but it didn't go moldy, which means that there must be properties in Xanthium gum as a preservative that works really, really well. It's what I kind of come across on the website is that generally it says for just about every single sauce that I've seen that you must use this within four weeks. Bring it back to the website. And we do get that door in a cool place, but in my fridge, so that's cool. Away from direct sunlight, once opened, keep refrigerated and consume within four weeks. So for me, if you have sauces in the fridge, they're going to last a lot longer than four weeks. But once again, I really don't get this little bit of abandon. It's almost, it's a bit like saying, you know, every four weeks get and put some more sauce from us and stuff like that. I don't like it. It's a bit like the countdown at the start of this video. But what I've done is kept these sauces in the fridge for four weeks. And looking at the top is you can see that it's slightly crusted over. It's kind of self-sealed itself. Brilliant. Most sauces will do that. And if I put each of these sauces out on a plate, we can see that all the sauces look fine. I tasted a couple at this point, they taste exactly as they did four weeks ago. Uh, and they're great. And out of curiosity, I'll just use a shop bought sauce, which has also been in the fridge for four weeks. And as it comes out, we can see it's really, really runny. And then eventually the sauce turns up. But once again, why, 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 why do we put the four week limit on that? That will put people off buying it, and as we've just proven on this video, it is going to last a lot longer than four weeks. Uh, once again, not quite too sure. So as I said at the start of this video, I actually emailed the Skinny Sauce Company, and I was asking for two things. One was the actual uh, free samples that they didn't send, so I got my own. And the second thing was about nutrition. And this is what they said. Hi Steve. Thank you for your email. All nutritional information and a full list of ingredients are available under each individual product on our website. I hope this helps. Well, interestingly enough, at the time of receiving that email, I went onto the website and it would actually show, you know, these sources are zero calorie based on two mil or three mil or whatever. Uh, and I did request the information either in milliliters or grams. But what's interesting enough is that if we now go back to the website and say so we have a look at tomato ketchup, if we scroll down, we have nutrition. The nutrition is now being shown in 15 milliliter servings and 100 milliliter. Now, when I started this review, the only way you could get that information was by looking at the back of the bottle. So, Skinny Sauce Company, if you're watching, brilliant. I'm really, really glad that you decided to do this because you've been a little bit more open. And it's also good is that, you know, we can see at this point per 100 milliliters is that tomato ketchup would have 22 calories in it rather than saying per 15 or per, you know, 5, 2, whatever. It's got zero in. So a thumbs up for this, which is good. But looking at the Skinny Sauce website, we have 100 mil and we have 15 mil, and which is a much better breakdown. I mean, this is brilliant now. And it's also showing energy, fat, saturates, what's in there, carbohydrates, etc, etc. Good job. I do have one problem with it. If you're doing a diet or you want to know how much sauce that you're going to be eating, chances are you're going to put it on a burger, food, salad or whatever. And you're going to give it a good old squirt. And if you're measuring your food, 
or you want to be conscious about how much uh, calories that you're intaking is that basically you're going to monitor it in grams so looking here if you maybe print them out of ketchup on something if you put in things on salad it's going to add to the grammage and the grammage is normally between 15 and 30 grams of what you put on that so so, so looking at brand versus brand for example we try to get a common grammage or a common milliliter uh, bet end so that it's fair and if we look at tomato ketchup it's measured in grams compared to milliliters on the skinny sauce website so before I can actually compare and test this using brand versus brand the problem I've got is that they all need to be in grams and the only way we can do that is by measuring each of the sauces so to be fair what I did was measure water coming all that 15 milliliters of water is equal to 15 grams and I've got a measuring cup at 15 milliliters so that's pretty quite you know pretty easy and once we know that that's right what I need to do is just take each of the sauces from the skinny food company and to be fair I also took sauces from places like Asda Tesco and weighed them and that generates a spreadsheet which uh, basically tells you if you're taking 15 milliliters of a sauce what the grammage is so I now end up with a list of foods barbecue sauce brown sugar etc etc where you're taking 15 milliliters of the liquid measuring it which will then tell you what the gram is and if we come down the list we've done all the skinny products here so we've got skinny chip shop sauce we've got skinny honey mustard we've got skinny ketchup etc etc and this column here is basically just telling you what it would be as 100 grams and what i've done is also made a front end sheet so what i can do is select the sauce that i'm interested in then I'm interested in 100 grams, then it comes back with the calorie amount, the saturated amount, and the carbohydrates amount, which is the actual information that we need for brand versus brand. So if we go back to the we can't spell success without you.com website, or just type in nadi.info, and if we go across to downloads, we always have the brand versus brand challenges, and if we click on that, we can go to common foods. And on here, we should have sauces. It's just there. So clicking on sauces, we'll get our fat sheet up. And the fat sheet as ever is sorted in calorie order. Now what I've done with this, if we go to the bottom, is included a wide range of sauces. Now this will be videoed on a brand versus brand challenge quite soon. But we're looking at the sauces per 30 gram serving. And once again, this is based on me weighing the sauces. I'm only using standard scales, so we're not doing it to the point, point of a gram or anything like that. It's to give us a good idea of how, you know, how, how many calories there are in a 30 gram sample of sauce. And looking at calories, the skinny stuff is the, which is what we wanted to be. So we had the five products and the skinny ketchup we got garlic and herb, sweet honey, chip chop curry, smoky barbecue and ketchup there and they're all under 10 calories per 30 grams brilliant that's what we want interestingly enough we have this hot sauce here which is coming in at 5.7 calories per 30 grams so you know people it looks like people are working on keeping these calories down and if you're going for a chilli sauce, once again we've got Asda there. But, you know, even Asda on the healthier chilli sauces is double to what the skinny sauce has to offer. Looking at the saturated fat, it's traces, so it's either 0 or 0 0.1, so we don't have to worry about those. And once again, looking at the carbohydrates, generally we're under 1 apart from the ketchup. And once again, we don't have to worry about that. And that is out of a sample of about 100 or so products. So there we go. So even using brand versus brand challenges, it's there. It's at the top of the list for the lowest calories. You know, it's, it really is. Uh, what can you say?
But the big question is, is it calorie free? And the answer to that is. No. Based on instruction from the European Commission for Food Safety, a food to be calorie or energy free, it must satisfy the following. A claim that a food is energy free, and any claim likely to have the same meaning for the consumer, may only be made where the product does not contain more than 4 calories per 100 milliliters. For tabletop sweeteners the limit of 0.4 calories per portion, with equivalent sweetening properties to 6 grams of sucrose, approximately 1 teaspoon of sucrose, applies.